Und wir auf Kevin warten, ja. weil wir absolut heiß drauf sind, ihn endlich mal kennenzulernen und mit ihm Gas zu geben. Super jung ist und auch wahrscheinlich viel Ahnung hat und großes Wissen. Das ist eine Legende, ne? Ja, das ist ja heute der erste Tag, den wir so quasi jetzt zusammen haben. Äh, hatten wir auf der FIBO schon zusammen zu tun. Sehr angenehmer Typ. Äh, ja, man merkt so, dass er eigentlich keinen Promi-Bonus hat oder sich für, für irgendwas Besonderes hält, sondern wirklich ganz bodenständiger Mensch. Ja. Ich bin seit Jahren ein Fan von ihm. Und durch die elfmalige um Mr. Olympia-Teilnahme ist es ja auch äh, ein bekannter Mann geworden. Äh, zumal er ja mindestens, äh, ich glaube, vier oder fünf Mal sogar den zweiten Platz da belegt hat. Das ist schon, wie gesagt, ein wundervolles Gefühl und ich bin froh, äh, ihn hier begrüßen zu dürfen. Kevin Leroney, die Maryland Muscle Machine, four times Miss Olympia Runner-up, yeah. second time Arnold Classic Winner and now welcome in Cologne. Thank you, man. I think there's a certain reason why you came here to Germany. Maybe you can tell us why. Yeah, um, actually I came here for, uh, for the launch of my nutritional supplement company. Uh, I got a lot of fans here in Germany and you know I, when I was competing on the tours and everything I would always come to Germany and this is one of my favorite places to come you know and I think I was like uh, maybe four time German champion so you know I wanted to um, just introduce my supplement line to, to Germany because I have a lot of fans that are asking you know where can they buy this where can they buy this so Uh, this is why I'm here. Okay, so these are your products. So maybe you yes. can tell us just a little bit what these products are about and what's the difference between the competitors on the market? Uh, well, a lot of difference between my products is uh, this right here is a Levero pump and this is actually a pre-workout. I wanted to uh, create a whole complete uh, supplement line. Number one, something that uh, didn't have a proprietary blend. I wanted my line to be straightforward so that when you read the directions, you have the um, dosages and everything listed down to you know how much to take everything is on the back of the labels and for me this is very important because i wanted to have a product that was straightforward uh what's in the what's on the label is actually in the product a lot of supplement companies um you know throughout the world they have proprietary blends proprietary blend is when they list that The ingredient is in it, but they don't disclose how many milligrams. Okay. With my product, I tell you exactly how many milligrams, how many peak ATP, how much NADH, and all these things are listed. You can see the dosages that you're taking on the labels, mm -hmm. you know? And this is very important because when you go back and you do your research on uh, how much the body can actually absorb you know, then you will be able to see that I have enough in this product the way when you take my product, the Leveroni Signature Series, you're going to feel the effect. So that's the main difference. So how much time did you spend in creating your complete line? Uh, it's something that I've been working on um, for a very, very long time. I just felt like uh, this was the year to finally uh, announce it to the world, you know. So, I mean, you, you can't create a product like this um, in a short period of time. You know, you have to really do your research because the ingredients is always changing every year. You're coming out with new ingredients, new improved formulations. So, I just wanted to come out with something that was unique and different. My opinion, I think it's one of the best products out there. The taste is perfect. Um, we have a huge range of uh, of tastes, you know, from chocolate to vanilla, from to cocoa, chocolate. Which is your and favorite? And on and on and on, you know. I like, um, I like uh, banana peach. Banana peach, know, okay. Banana peach, yeah. So if someone would be interested in the advice of Kevin Leroni, what would you advise in pre- and post-workout nutrition? You know, I would say, number one, the most important thing is make sure you have a good, clean, balanced diet. You know, supplements are exactly what it is. It's a supplementation. But the main thing in order for anyone to gain size or see any results, you have to have a balanced nutritional diet. And that comes from food. You know, nothing is more better for your body than actual food. You know, a lot of people think, well, you know, I can take this and not eat. You know, you have to also eat. So my advice to someone would be first, learn what works for your body. 
Mm-hmm. Get on a balanced nutritional program. You know, if you don't know how to do that, then go to your gym and seek out a nutritionalist and someone that can help you understand how many calories you need depending on the workload that you're putting on your body. So, I mean, we can get real scientific into this thing and really start talking deep knowledge. But I think right now we just need to keep things simple and basic. So make sure you go and buy vitamins. You understand what you're buying. You understand the purpose why you why you're buying it. And um, you understand what you're putting in your body, you know. So when you go to the store, you need to be educated, first of all. And if you don't know anything about you got questions you want to, that you need answered, ask the person that's in the store. They should have someone there that's educated that can help you. So nochmal kurz auf Deutsch, I just explain it in German in a few sentences. Um, das sind tolle Produkte, aber es ist natürlich nur eine Nahrungsergänzung. Also man muss natürlich schauen, dass die normale Ernährung stimmt und nur dann funktionieren auch Nahrungsergänzungsmittel, so wie sie auch funktionieren sollen. BCAA uh, Supplements are designed to, you know, it's like B vitamins to just, when you go in the gym and you train, whether you're work, working out and you're running outside or you're riding a bike, whatever you're doing, your body's going to sweat, you're going to burn calories. You know, the BCAA is what it does is replenishes your body. You're putting in to your body what you've burnt out in a faster, in the, in the faster delivery okay. system. That's what BCAAs are. Okay. Help you for, re- for, for recovering. Also BCAAs würde Kevin Levroni nur nach dem Training empfehlen, weil es halt äh, die Hauptaminosäuren sind, die während dem Training verbraucht werden und man sie dann ähm, nach dem Training am besten wieder auffüllen kann. And is there something that you would advise uh, during the workout? Uh, a lot of people are saying, oh, I take pre, intra and post-workout nutrition. Is, or is this just too much? About uh, um, you know, every everybody's different. You know, it's it's not that much of a scientific approach when it comes to health and nutrition. Um, of course, you know, some people need energy going into the gym. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's why you create the uh, you know post workout. Uh, some people believe in uh, intra or whatever, and, and of course, for the guys out there and the girls out there that that want this, you know. Um, <coughs> It's available, you know. For me, what we have is uh, we have the amino acids and stuff that people can sip on, you know, as they're training. For me, I like to sip on glutamine personally. Okay. I like glutamine as I'm training through my workouts. Um, you know, so everybody's different. You know, there was a time when I was competing for the Mr. Olympia where, you know, I didn't even uh, take a, 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 a intro, whatever it was, when I was training. But nowadays, things have gotten so scientific, and they have a product for anything that you want to do you know and would you think it's an advantage compared to the 90s that there are a lot of products available like that i I think it's a great advantage i mean you walk into stores now in germany and um, supplement shops you know like we are here you know at the body store i mean they have a huge range of nutritional supplements so depending you can find anything you want here you know 15 20 years ago 10 years ago it wasn't like that so the industry has certainly grown would you think that the change of the industry and the bodybuilding is something that is in our days an advantage for the athletes can they be better than the athletes in the 90s because they have so much more options i think i think the sport any sport is always evolving Mm -hmm. it's always evolving for the better you know and you know it's the truth i mean you look at basketball players Look at football players. I mean, you're going to have some great athletes that come along and they're just gifted genetically. But I do think that the sport now has it, it's better than it was 10 years ago from, you know, from here, 15 years from now, because you have everything you possibly need and you can get it a lot quicker and a lot faster, you know. But there are guys like Arnold who are having a different opinion about the current status of bodybuilding. Um, said that bodybuilding is going into a wrong direction the athletes are just getting more massive well i mean it's it's i mean that's his opinion i i think you know when you talk about hardcore bodybuilding Mm -hmm. you know hardcore bodybuilding of course it's changed you know but if you talk about the overall sport okay the overall sport has certainly grown you know because when you go to shows now you have fitness you have bikini you have men's physique you have all of these things that you know we didn't have this five years ago what do you think about the men's physique division 
I think it's great. I, I think it's a very, very mainstream. And if you go to the shows, you'll see how many people are actually in the audience. You see how many people are actually in the shows. You know, 15, five, six, seven years ago, you go to a bodybuilding event and you'd probably only see about 80 people. Now you go and you'll see couple hundred you know five in some in america we have 500 people in shows and these are amateur shows so it's all about uh, the sport has certainly gotten a lot more mainstream and i think men's physique has has certainly brought the mainstream you know to our sport so it's it's open doors that hardcore bodybuilding you know uh could never open you know and i know arnold says you know um hey you know bodybuilders you know it's they look different than they used to look but he's talking about hard hardcore bodybuilding and I mean I, I agree with him you know no one wants to see a hardcore bodybuilder with a big extended gut because that is taking taking the look in the wrong direction but overall as a sport the sport has certainly grown and you can tell it's grown because when you come into a store like this you see so many different products you know and we didn't used to have this you know six seven eight nine ten years ago But uh, when you uh, speak about men's physique division, they just have four quarter turns to present themselves. And what is it for a guy like you who was gifted in the presentation and posing? Was it something that would be interesting to Kevin Levroni if you would restart your career, if you would be 16 years old again? Maybe, probably. I mean, you know, probably, I don't know. I mean, men's physique guys nowadays, you know, they, they guys look good. You know, bodybuilders used to look like that. Steve Reeves, when he first started, he used he to look like that. He had a double like bicep pose in which he could yeah. present himself. You know, these men's physique guys look like bodybuilders too, you know? Um, and it, you can take some of these men's physique guys, if you've ever been to a show before and you see these guys walk out on stage, you know, the only thing that isn't as big as the other as bodybuilders is their legs, you know? But they're certainly a lot more pleasing to the eye than a hardcore bodybuilder because first thing you see when you see a hardcore bodybuilder is you look at him and people think he looks like a freak you know people think first thing they see is oh he's steroids you know but the men's physique guys i think it's i think it's certainly good for our sport that that we have uh this class of athlete also men's physique division den wir wahrscheinlich auch alle ist äh, für einen Kevin Leveroni ähm, eine sehr gute Sache, weil es halt dazu geführt hat, dass mehr Leute sich mit dem Sport befassen und es halt was ist, was man sich anguckt und auf den ersten Blick schon mal nicht abschreckend wirkt, weil die halt fürs Auge eher eine Freude sind, wie er sagt, ja, die sind gestylt, they have a nice uh, smile, white teeth, the guys yeah. from Men's Physik. Um, we had an article about you, just three or four weeks ago mm -hmm. when you won the nationals 90, 91. 91 so when you remember back that time yeah. and see the top six in that days with the quality and the definition yeah what 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 are your thoughts on that compared to the guys <laughs> yeah I, i mean that that was just an amateur show yeah, I mean, and compared to the honors classic this year you know again you know I, I think every athlete, you know, work, they work hard. What, what was you know, your weight on that show? My weight uh, was 240 pounds. Also sind know. 108 kilo. So, you know, every, you know, it's just a different time, okay. you know. The time was different then and the time is different now. So, you know, to say that that time was better than the time now i think it's it's probably unfair you know at the time you know we did we we did what we had to do to help the sport evolve and get to where it is now um i think the guys today you know they're doing the best that they can and i just think that the the athletes the quality of the athletes are are less than what it used to be you know when i would compete um But, uh, you know, the guys are still doing their best and they're, they're, they're trying to, you know, do the best that they can to represent the sport the best way that they can. You know, not everyone's going to be a Michael Jordan. Not everyone's going to be an Arnold Schwarzenegger or, uh, you know, Lee Haney or Ronnie Coleman. I mean, these people come along, you know, once <laughs> once in a lifetime, you know. Uh, so, um, you know, just like golf, you never know that. Tiger Woods will come, you know, so maybe down the road, you know, it might be a, a guy that um, completely, 
you know, be able to take the sport to another level like Arnold Schwarzenegger did. In the 80s and the 90s, the bodybuilders uh, swear to beef. Eat beef and you look like a bull. That was something that Vince Taylor told me oh, okay. two weeks ago. Now we have certain people who are um, promoting a vegan lifestyle. Yeah. So um, I guess you were a big fan of fish during your preparation. Yeah. So what is, with all your experience, uh, <laughs> what, right what, what is your uh, advice to people who are just uh, looking for a good uh, diet food, for good protein salt? I mean, you know, everybody's different. Some people like fish, some people like chicken, mm -hmm. some people like steak. You know, I know some women that eat more steak than I do, you know. Uh, <laughs> but they're not big and puffy and all this stuff. So I just like fish. I like fish because fish is a cleaner source of protein. It's one of the cleanest sources of protein you possibly can put in your body, mm -hmm. which is flounder. Um, and it's easier for your body to digest this, you know, other than red meat. I think red meat is hard for your body to, to, to digest uh, red meat, you know. Um, and I think back in the biblical days, you know, um, in the Old Testament of the Bible, I don't even think that, you know, men really ate, ate meat at all. I don't think God really designed our teeth to eat red meat. Um, For me, I just like fish. It's easier on my system. It's it's a clean source of protein, and I, that's that's where I've always gotten my uh, my protein from. So no steak and egg breakfast for you? No, not not saying it's it's bad, but for me, I just don't have a taste for uh, for for red meat much. Mm. Um, you can jetzt auch noch mal in den Artikel gucken. Da sind noch die weiteren Tourdaten, so the people can have a look at the article in which the uh, video is embedded in, with the other tour dates. So, uh, also wenn ihr dann Kevin treffen wollt bei einem der uh, Termine, könnt ihr dann auch Samples bekommen und ihr bekommt auch Shaker und Autogramme und T-Shirts und könnt natürlich auch die Produkte von ihm kaufen. Uh, and uh, last but not least, yeah. there will be a Kevin Roni Pro Contest next year. Yeah, yeah. Um, What is this all about? It's pretty awesome, man. Uh, <laughs> Charles, is that your idea? <laughs> um, no, actually, again, You know, it's all about giving back to a sport that you love and a sport that you care about. You know, um, it's just a way for me to be able to uh, support support the people, support the fans, um, and create an opportunity for them to be seen on a greater scale, a larger scale. And when I say a larger scale, a bigger stage, a bigger platform, you know, for, for the people. So. Uh, I've talked to the Weeder office and they've allowed me to have uh, the Lavroni Pro Classic and it's going to be in Poland and it will be 2016. It will be one the weekend before the Arnold Classic in America. We will have the Kevin Lavroni Pro Classic in Poland the same weekend as the Fit Festival. So if you guys ever been to the Fit Festival and could dance Poland, The Lavroni Classic has joined forces with the uh, Fit Festival, and we're looking for an amazing weekend. The show will start. Fit Festival starts, I think, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's about four days. Your whole family can come down. We have MMA fighting. You have arm wrestling. You Just everything that the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic USA has, and we have that on a smaller scale. So people always say, well, what is it? I always compare it to a, it's a mini Arnold Classic, and it's one week uh, before the Arnold Classic USA. Come on down to Dance Poland and you guys have a great weekend at the Lavroni Pro Classic, the same weekend as the Fit Festival. Boom. Also eine Woche bevor es dann zu Arnold's Classic quasi geht, findet in Polen das Fit Festival statt und dort gibt es auch eine Kevin Lavroni Classic und ja, ist nicht ganz so weit bis nach Columbus und ich glaube auch eine bessere Anfahrt möglich. Um, any chance that you jump back on stage? My life is in a different spot right now. You know, my fans want me to do it, but I have a nine-year-old son. Um, I'm able to go out and see the world and help educate people. I believe taking my experiences and helping people, uh, I'm going to be better at doing that than okay. walking on stage and competing again. I competed 68 times um, in 11 years. So that's averaging, that's averaging a little more than seven shows a year for 11 years straight every year and it takes a lot you know 
uh, retired with the best record in professional bodybuilding history. I'm good with that, and I'm cool with that. My son's playing football, and I just want to be there to support him right now. No, I have 20, 23 first place uh, IFBB contest wins, and I have uh, uh, second uh, 18 times in the IFBB, and the rest was like in the top five, I think two times out of the top five. Four-time German champion. I've been here competing a long time too, so I don't have anything to prove on the Mr. Olympia stage no more. Uh, any chance that you go and be a guru like Dennis James don't, or Don Long? I don't want to be a guru. <laughs> For me, I just, yeah, I just want to be a motivator. I want to be a motivator, man. There's too many gurus out there right now. Uh, for me, I just, I just want to be a motivator. I want to be a motivator helping people and, you know, going around, traveling and talking and speaking. Um, Did you have a guy like that when you no, competed? No, never had a guru. <laughs> no, okay. no, never had a guru. Um, I, I don't really believe in you know gurus some people need gurus some people i never had a guru arnold never had a guru lee haney never had a guru um it's just it's something that people want to do like facebook or twitter so some people have gurus is it what it is so we have social media that people are always um interesting in facebook instagram and all this yeah. stuff and they can reach you and your line on all these channels yeah my line is um uh it's available actually you can go online Uh, it's called um, LavroniSupplements.com. You can reach us there. You can send an email. I'm always available, and I always answer all of my emails. You also can find you can find the line on Facebook. It's called Lavroni Signature Series. Um, that's the Facebook channel. I'm also on Facebook. You can find me. It's Kevin Lavroni, the official Kevin Lavroni uh, page. We have the blue icon there. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, it's Kevin Lavroni, and you can also find me on Twitter, which is Lavroni Kevin. So I answer all of my uh, fans, and I post all of my stuff. So when they do reach out to me, they're going to be talking to me. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, man. I um just want to say it's great being here in Germany and uh, coming down. And uh, I'm glad you guys picked the range up here. And uh, just looking forward, looking forward to um, seeing everyone. Vergesst nicht die weiteren Tourdaten. Kevin Leroni und seiner Signature Series.